So we're very happy for the last talk to have Yuya Tanzaki from the Ikawa Institute, and he's going to talk about idiomatic continuity and symmetry twisting. Thanks, Yuya. Okay, thank you very much for introduction. Yes, so today I'm talking about adiabatic continuity and symmetry twisting. And I'm very happy to have a chance to talk in this reunion conference. Indeed, so past two paper related to this topic of my paper appear around the time of KITP 2017 conference. And uh, uh, so in this talk, I want to summarize a series of work studied from that three years ago conference. So I'm very happy to have a chance to coming back. Okay. So, so I want to start from a brief general introduction. So, so as a quantum field theorist, uh, we are interested in this kind of a many dimensional integral, which is called path integral. So phi is a space of field. And S of phi defines the classical action of the theory, and G squared is a coupling constant controlling your theory. And by summing up all possible configuration of your field from space time to the target space, then you can obtain the partition function. And the reason why we are interested in this partition function is it defines the thermodynamic free energy by taking a log. So by computing this quantity, you can know about the phases of matter defined by this quantum field theory. So, so we want to know as, so we can know about the quantum state of the matter by doing this kind of computation, which is quite interesting from physical viewpoint. And so as a, so usually if, so naively thinking if the, controlling parameter coupling constant is quite small, then we expect that this partition function has a, access a good approximation as a perturbative expansion. And uh, this to topic resurgence is related to whether this is summable or Borel summable. And if not, uh, so by extending the result, so notion of analyticity, so we, so we want to make the meaningful function out of this kind of perturbative expansion. But uh, in many interesting quantum field theory, this statement itself, so small coupling constant, is not always meaningful. So, so before writing down this perturbative approximation of the partition function, so it's, we are not sure whether this statement itself is physically meaningful. So to see this, possible, so dif difficulty. So let me briefly mention about the renormalization group. So what do we want to know about, so, so, so in the computation of the partition function, we are interested in the low energy state of the matter. So, so we can, so naively thinking, we can neglect about the high energy state of the matter and because its contribution to the partition function is expected to be small. So from this concept, we decompose the spatial field into two parts. So this is all spatial field and we decompose into a low energy field and high energy field. And we want to neglect about this high energy component. So from this perspective, we want to write down the partition function only as a path integral for low energy field. And since original path integral is defined by the integration of all possible fields, what we have in the new effective action for this path integral is defined by the path integral of the high energy field in the original action. And what we get is you get new action and a new coupling constant. And so this suggests that so, so coupling constant itself is not always meaningful in the quantum field theory. It is an energy dependent quantity and we are interested in whether this coupling constant has a well-defined definition in the low energy limit. And here, asymptotic, so difficulty coming out of asymptotic freedom takes place. So as I said, coupling constant is now an energy dependent quantity. And if this G squared E 
is decreases for smaller e. In other words, if it has a meaningful definition as a small energy, then we know that the perturbation theory is a good approximation. But still, it could be very non-summable, so resurgence takes place in this in, in order to go beyond this approximation. But uh, there are more difficult situations when this coupling constant flows into the opposite direction. For example, very typical and difficult example takes this kind of form for the coupling constant as a function of energy. So lambda is some typical dynamical space coming out of quantum field theory, and E is a renormalization group parameter defined in the previous page. And you see, so when E is very large, then log becomes large. So this coupling constant has a small value and we, can, we know how to define that coupling constant. But when we are interested in the ground state or partition function, we want to make this typical energy scale small, as small as possible. But uh, since we only know about the high energy definition of the coupling constant, so it's a big issue to know what is the coupling constant itself. So this is uh, one of the main difficulty when studying the asymptotically free field theory from the viewpoint of the perturbation theory. So in order to use the idea of perturbation or resurgence, we want to make up uh, some tool to define the coupling constant itself. And so since coupling constant is an energy dependent function, so the idea, so natural idea to define the coupling constant is to introduce another energy scale. And in this case, it is a temperature T. So if temperature, so we introduce or we heat up the system, we have a typical energy scale because of that temperature. So, so this means that, so although, so, coupling constant was a dependent quantity on energy, but since we have a typical energy scale temperature, we can specify the value of the running coupling by evaluating at the temperature, g square t. And if this temperature is sufficiently large compared to the strongly coupled energy scale lambda, then you have a meaningful definition of the coupling and furthermore, it is expected to be a small value. So perturbation or resurgence works well. But next question is, so originally we are interested in the low energy state, but we now introduce a high, en high energy scale temperature. So do these states are related or in other words, so you introducing the temperature, can we know about the information of the ground state? So this is the next question for us. And so there is a conceptual difficulty, conceptual difficulty if we naively introduce temperature as a scale energy scale, as a, yeah, as a reference energy scale to study the theory. So the reason why, so I want to give a heuristic reason why there is a difficulty to study the ground state in this method. So some dynamics tells, so partition function is a free energy and its free energy is given by energy minus subtracted by temperature times entropy. And some dynamics tells us we should minimize this free energy and then you get the phases of matter. And so in the study of the ground state, we want to eventually make temperature to be zero. So second term vanishes. So if we are required to minimize the free energy, it is equivalent to minimize the internal energy or, it's a, so, or minimize the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. And in this process, so you do not care about entropy or density of state. So, so you just have to minimize the energy to find the ground state of the matter. But at high temperature, the second term may dominate the first term. So, so this means that in order to minimize the energy, so uh, minimize the free energy, what you should find is the large entropy state. So, as you, so, uh, so, by, so even if you cost the energy, 
if entropy increases sufficiently so that uh, this subtraction of minus t times entropy term wins the internal energy, then that's fine. So, so preferred state at high temperature is a large entropy state. So, so, at, so this clearly tells you that so the criterion for selecting the state at low temperature and high temperature are very different. So because of this, so typically, so ground state often prefers a spontaneous breaking. So, so in order to minimize the energy, symmetry may be spontaneously broken. But uh, this is the ordered state, which usually lowers the entropy. So at high temperature state, this kind of ordering should be disordered, should be gone out. So because of the very different criterion for selecting the state at low temperature and high temperature, it is very natural to expect that these two states are separated by phase transition or sharp crossover. So this is a difficulty to study the ground state of the asymptotically free field theory by introducing the temperature, although it makes the coupling constant well-defined and applicability of perturbation theory come into the game. But uh, this difficulty does not mean that we should give up immediately. So here, the new conjecture, adiabatic continuity for non-thermal boundary condition comes into the game. So putting so introducing the temperature in quantum field theory is basically equivalent to putting a system on a cylinder with a circumference L is given by inverse temperature. And the previous discussion basically tells you that so this so if we take periodic or yeah, so periodic boundary condition for boson and anti periodic boundary condition for fermion, this is called the summer boundary condition. So if we take this boundary condition, we're putting a system on the cylinder, then the previous heuristic discussion tells you that we also encounter the phase transition as we change L. And the large L state and the small L states are, so are very likely to be different. So the question is, so can we connect small and large L without phase transition or, or any sharp crossover? So this is what we want to achieve to study the asymptotically free, so ground state of field theory without having a difficulty of the definition of the coupling constant. And so this summer boundary condition most likely does not work. So, so instead of do, taking this summer boundary condition, we should explore a non-summer boundary condition to establish the adiabatic co continuity. And this is studied by Mithart for the gauge theory and the Gerald and Mithart around for the two-dimensional sigma model. And there are many developments from that. And basically, I'm talking about this result. So Gerald and Mithart's result for sigma model first. So although, so, so since it's already nicely reviewed for in previous Tatu's talk, so I on, let me very brief about two dimensional, so review on two dimensional CPN minus one sigma model. So prototype of, so this is a nice prototype of the adiabatic continuity, which is defined by this Lagrangian. And uh, so this Z is like a quark field for the spin variable, and uh, it is constrained by this equation. So basically it is a, uh, so n so theory of n complex field and two dimensional u1 gauge field and because of the u1 gauge invariance so symmetry is has a very interesting property so naively it, so so theory enjoys so theory has n complex field so naively thinking there are su and symmetry in the field, in the theory but because so it is a U1 gauge theory. So this quark field G itself is not a physical observable. So this overall U1 phase should not be observed in the symmetry. So we should divide by the center element of SUN. And so good flavor symmetry is SUN divided by GN. So, or especially when N is two, so I'm saying that so good flavor symmetry is SO3 instead of SU2 because of the absence of the 
overall, so because of the absence of physical meaning for the overall U1 phase of this complex field. And there is another good symmetry, charge conjugation symmetry, which is basically taking a complex conjugate of this N complex scalar field. But uh, this should flip the sign of the gauge field. So it flips the sign of the seat angle. And because of this property, this charge conjugation symmetry is a good symmetry only at theta equals zero or theta equal pi. And theta equal pi, so symmetric point of theta equal pi appears because of the two pi periodicity of the theta angle. And I want to talk about the phase diagram with, in order to know about whether the small uh, cylinder state is related to the large cylinder state. And uh, I draw two phase diagram and the left phase diagram is uh, drawn for the periodic boundary condition or thermal boundary condition. And uh, second phase diagram is uh, drawn for the symmetry twisted boundary condition using the SUN mod ZN flavor symmetry. And uh, its vertical axis is uh, inverse side of the cylinder and uh, uh, horizontal axis is a seat angle. And you see at uh, with a summer boundary condition, if you are in the zero temperature or infinite volume state, then as a function of theta at theta equal pi, there is a some phase transition or uh, some non-trivial physics is going on at theta equal zero. And for any other generic theta system is gapped and has a unique good ground state. But uh, and so theta equal pi is a very special point because it breaks charge conjugation symmetry spontaneously. But uh, in this summer phase diagram, as you so as long as you compactify the system size or if you introduce non-zero temperature, this symmetry breaking go is gone immediately and uh, nothing special happens in this two dimensional phase diagram except at infinite volume and theta equal pi. So in this sense, if you make the system, if you heat up the system, the state of the, that high temperature state seems to be very different from the low temperature state. Now let's take the symmetry twisted boundary condition then you see it's what is very interesting in this phase diagram is that so this C breaking at C type zero at infinite volume continues for any size of the circle or cylinder. So this suggests that even at small cylinder, so, so quantum state of that small cylinder seems to be related to the large volume state. So in other words, after taking the twist, so after twisting with the symmetry, the spontaneous breaking of C at C take pi is persistent at any side of the circle. And this is first identified by Gerald and Mithat's work in small L regime. So let me give a brief review, although it is already talked in Tatsuk's talk. So after in the case of periodic boundary condition, so seat angle dependence is only carried by instanton, which has a topological charge, topological charge one. So because of this, so natural seat dependence appearing in this small L state with a summer boundary condition is cosine theta. So there's, so it's a just integer power of e to the i theta. So because of this, uh, it is so very naturally pe so periodic, two pi periodic in terms of theta without any singularity. So because of this nature, when we, you take the thermal boundary condition, then at small l, there should be no phase transition at all. So consistent with this phase diagram, which is first pointed by, by Affleck in the large n limit. So, so in the summer boundary condition, theta dependence becomes smooth, unlike the expectation in two dimensional limit. But what happens with, if you take the symmetry twist? In that twisted boundary condition, so, so instanton is not the fundamental object carrying the seat angle. 
So in this symmetry twisted boundary condition, instanton fractionalizes into n fractional instanton, so n constituents. And uh, so theta dependence is uh, so, so, so carried equally in these n constituents. So because of this n fractionalization, natural theta dependence is not e to the i theta. So instead, uh, natural theta dependence becomes e to the i theta over n. So because of this, so, so free energy with this symmetry twisted boundary condition appears in this kind of form, cosine of the theta over n instead of cosine theta. But the cosine theta over n is not two pi periodic, although theta should be two pi periodic. So this is compensated by the appearance of n states. So, so n, so pseudo ground state and the real ground state energy should be picked up by minimizing those n possibility of the ground state. And because of this, so theta dependence is, may not be smooth because, because at when going from theta equals zero to two pi, there should be a phase transition going from one branch of, for the ground state rabbit to the another branch. So as a result, theta equal pi should have a singularity even at small l, which is consistent with this picture. So, so for example, in this theta equal zero, so maybe k equal zero branch is selected, but at theta equal two pi, k equal one branch is selected. And in order to go from k equal zero to k equal one, so, she, so phase transition should appear at theta equal pi. So in this way, so small L regime seems to have a very similar structure for the expected behavior of a two-dimensional limit. And, but this is very surprising from the viewpoint of the first discussion of the free energy. So, so from the viewpoint of free energy, so large temperature state or small L state may seem to be dominated by large entropy state. But the large entropy state means that the charge, con so any spontaneous breaking of usual symmetry should be gone out. But the, so this is very contradictory to the previous heuristic discussion. So I want to, so I wanted to know about why this kind of uh, so counterintuitive thing happen in this twisted boundary condition. And uh, so in so 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 this so this tells you that so so why spontaneous so we should consider about why spontaneous breaking of C at C equal pi should happen at at the infinite volume limit. And this is uh, so known by basically as a Harden conjecture in condensed matter system. And there are many works related to why Harden conjecture should be buried at theta equal pi for CP1 model. And, uh, and around the time of the KITP conference 2017, it is identified why this CPN minus one model at theta equal pi should break CP charge conjugation symmetry. And it turns out that, that it is not a dynamical nature, but a kinematical nature of the symmetry of this system. So in other words, this charge conjugation symmetry and the flavor symmetry turns out to have a mixed anomaly. And in order to match, to satisfy the anomaly match condition, this charge conjugation symmetry should be spontaneously broken in two dimensional CPN minus one sigma model. So, so, so in other words, so under the presence of SUN divided by GN background gauge field, it is denoted by one form gauge field A and the two form gauge field B. Then doing the charge conjugation symmetry, it has an extra factor e to the I, I of B, which could be plus or minus one for N equal two. And in order to satisfy this anomaly matching just with the ground state to theta equal pi, so ground state at theta equal pi should be doubly degenerated by breaking the charge conjugation symmetry. And you may wonder why this kind of unnatural two-form gauge field happen when we introduce SUN divided by G and background gauge field. And it's a little bit difficult to explain it, but so let's consider n equal two case. 
Then, so SU2 symmetry is generated by, so SU2 matrix. And uh, let me pick up sigma X and sigma Y, which is a clock and shift matrices for SU2. And importantly, sigma X and sigma Y does not commute, instead they anti-commute. So product of sigma X and sigma Y is equal to minus one times sigma Y times sigma X. So it has a non-commutativity by an overall sign. But as you see, so overall phase of the quark field is not a physical object because it is a part of the U1 gauge symmetry. So if you only interested in a physical observable, observable, this non-commutativity of sigma y and sigma y should not be noticed. So, so, so in order to gauge SO3 symmetry, so, so, so this non-commutativity should be neglected. And so, and this two form gauge field is a nice mathematical device to know about the fact that good symmetry is SO3 instead of SU2. And if you introduce this two form gauge field, you get an overall plus minus one phase by doing the charge conjugation symmetry at C take of pi. And you get a nice discrete anomaly to explain the fact that C symmetry should be broken at C take of pi. So since now, so, so symmetry breaking at C take of pi is a kinematical constraint because of the anomaly. So we are wondering whether this anomaly constraint persist after circle compactification. And unfortunately, if you take naive summary compactification, this anomaly indeed disappear. And it is consistent with the fact that the high temperature state prefers the disordering. So if this naive compactification still has a persistent anomaly under compactification, then this means that so high temperature state should break charge conjugation symmetry even. But, but at high temperature, any symmetry seems to be restored. So for the consistency, this anomaly should, be, should disappear under the naive summer compactification. But what is interesting for the symmetry twisting is that with the symmetry twisting, there is a non-trivial symmetry acting on the Polyakov loop. So, so in that sense, this GN symmetry acting on Polyakov loop is sometimes called center symmetry of CPN, twisted CPN minus one model. And because of the presence of the symmetry acting on a line operator in this symmetry twisting, this GN symmetry turns out to have a same anomaly with the two-dimensional model. So if you gauge this GN symmetry acting on the Polyakov loop, you recover the same anomaly computed in two-dimensional anomaly like this. And because of this presence of the anomaly, it turns out that so two-dimensional phase diagram of the compactified CPN minus one model should break charge conjugation symmetry at any circle compactification size. So there's a nice, so I want to present a one figure why summer phase, so summer partition function and the symmetry to the partition function are very different. So from the viewpoint of the Hilbert space, so we have a many excited states, for example, a meson state in the adjoint representation and the singlet representation of the SUN mod ZN. And in the summer phase, in the summer partition function, what you have is you should sum up all of these states with the equal weight. And this means that if at the high temperature, these state, so number of these states are very large, it is, a, so it is roughly n squared state. And this state mainly contribute and it easily overcomes the ground state contribution because the number of ground state is just one. So this large number of excited state cannot be comparable with the contribution from the ground state. It should dominate. So because of this, any disordering because of the ground in, for the ground state should disappear after summer compactification. But if you take the symmetry twist, then, so then that means that for these states of the, in the non-trivial representation of SUN mod GN, there is a phase factor appearing because of the symmetry twisting. And because of these phase, so if you sum up all these states, 
the number of contribution is now just order one, surprisingly. So this n squared contribution summing up here in space disappears because of the phase factor appear, appearing because thanks to the symmetry twisting. And with this, this small number of contribution for, from high energy state, it suggests that it could be comparable with the contribution from the ground state. So this nicely suggests that so, so, so even if you introduce, or if, even if you introduce large temperature or small circle size L, so, so ground state could overcome the contribution from the high energy excited state and disordering doesn't appear because of this nice cancellation. And um, in, from the viewpoint of anomaly, if you take a thermal compactification, only in two dimensional limit anomaly survives also, there should be non-trivial symmetry breaking in two dimensional limit. But as long as you compactify your space time, there is no constraint from the first anomaly, so symmetry can be restored. But if you take a symmetry twisted boundary condition, the anomaly in 2D itself still survives uh, even after compactification. So because of this anomaly constraint, so at any size L, so symmetry should be spontaneously broken. So there is a nice uh, co comparison between these two pictures. And uh, one of the strengths from the anomaly viewpoint is, uh, so Anomaly is just a symmetry statement, so it is easy to generalize to other quantum field theories. And uh, I will talk about the two-dimensional matrix type sigma model in this talk, but uh, so that's uh, already nicely reviewed about the application of four-dimensional quantum chromodynamics. And let me talk about one nice example for the matrix-like sigma model. It is a flag manifold sigma model. So basically, it is almost uh, similar to the principal per color model, but with a slight difference of the detail of the action. But uh, I do not talk about such detail. So, but this sigma model is basically defined by SUN valued field phi, like a principal color model. But uh, what is different is there are n minus one U1 gauge field, like CPN minus one model. And uh, because of this many U1 gauge field in two dimension, so, so SU and sigma model accepts, accepts N minus one sheet angle. So you can draw a rich phase diagram in, some, in the space of sheet angle compared with the CPN minus one model. And this model recently acquires many attention in the context of quantum SU and in the study of quantum SU and spin chain. And this, uh, theory has a nice anomaly, and so this is the expected two-dimensional phase diagram from the study of the anomaly. And we are interested in whether this phase diagram can be re reproduced by SUN the GN twisted boundary condition. And so if you take the flavor twisted boundary condition, then there is a nice fractionalized object like a CPN minus one model. So minimal BPS configuration indeed has a fractional topological charge in terms of you, so those N minus one U1 gauge field. And this is one of the candidate fractional, so this is a most dominant minimal BPS, one of the most dominant minimal BPS configuration contributing to the partition function. So there are various uh, Polyakov loop and Polyakov loop jump jump fractionary. And using this kind of fractional instance, we can now apply a dilute gas approximation on small compactified size regime. Oh, sorry. And uh, this is a uh, so computed ground state energy in terms of as a function of theta in that compactified regime. And if you look this ground state energy from upward, this is a light figure as a function of theta. And uh, you see, so, so this is a two dimensional phase diagram expected from the anomaly. And this is the exact explicit computation for this uh, uh, flag manifold sigma model in small compactified size regime. 
And uh, thanks to the sim nice symmetry twisting, this so anomaly constraint survives and so nice two-dimensional expectation can be explicitly checked thanks using the using the semi-classical analysis. So let me finish my talk giving one open issue, gapless versus ground state degeneracy. So by taking a symmetry twisted boundary, uh, boundary condition, then we can preserve the anomaly of a two-dimensional theory. So, so, so even after small circle compactification with symmetry twisting, so, what, so symmetry should be spontaneously broken or in some sense ground state should be degenerate at any side of the compactification. And in, in, so, and by compactifying in the two dimensional quantum field theory, basically you get one usual quantum mechanics. And since usual zero plus one D QFT quantum mechanics has a mass gap. So, so this anomaly of a two dimensional theory should be matched by ground state degeneracy if you take uh, symmetry twisted compactification. And uh, my question I want to, so the question I want to pose is uh, whether we can distinguish two dimensional, so original two dimensional theory is gapless or uh, has a ground state degeneracy. And uh, so, and uh, let me give a, uh, review of uh, one of my study to approach this question. So as a trial, we consider n flavor muscle stringer model, which is believed to be gapless. And, uh, in, and this muscle stringer model is uh, believed to be dual to the SUN level one with Minowice model. So it, it should be gapless. And if you take symmetry twisted boundary condition of n flavor muscle stringer model, then, so if, so in the case of a summer boundary condition, so, 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 so this, so I compare summer boundary condition and the symmetry twisted boundary condition. And in the case of summer boundary condition, the, so, so important uh, non perturbative object is instanton and it has a topological charge to pi in terms of gauge field. But uh, in the case of, uh, so symmetry twisted boundary condition, these instant on fractionalize into three pieces in, in, for three flavor case. So instead of instant on fractional instant on plays an important role. And, and now you can compute chiral condensate using the, uh, these fractional instant, so using the dilute gas approximation of the fractional instant on. And this, uh, Orange, cu orange curve is the result. And uh, so horizontal axis is a uh, circle compactification size. So this small circle compactification size regime is a valid regi regime of this approximation. And since n flavor Schinger model is exactly solvable, so, so I can plot the so exact curve of the uh, exact curve for the chiral condensate as a blue, and this is a blue curve. And since it is a, and since two dimensional limit it sh should flow into the West Minowice model or conformal field theory, this kind of one point expectation value of one point function should disappear at the, in the limit of L going to infinity. And interestingly, so this dilute gas approximation for the a symmetry twisted finger model shows a very similar behavior with that of the uh, exact result. And so exact result suggests that this, uh, this decaying is given by L to the minus one to the, so one over N. So this fraction power appears, but uh, difficulty, so, so, but, uh, with the symmetry twisting, what appears is chiral condensate behaves like this form. So this fractional shift does not appear. But in any case, both disappears in the L going to infinity limit. And I think it is suggestive that, so this uh, dilute gas approximation, it may give us some close uh, good prediction whether gapless nature appears in two dimensional limit or not. 
but uh, but uh, I cannot give so I just presented a uh, one example and I cannot give a definite statement. So I want to leave it as an interesting open issue for as a, for the future study. Okay, let me finish my talk. So summary is so and um, so 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 symmetry twisting is a good strategy to study the ground state nature with a semi-classical limit. And this symmetry twisting accepts a nice anomaly interpretation, at least for certain sigma model and some of the four-dimensional gauge theories. And so semi-classic in small circle regime real, give a nice explicit real, realization of the constraint of the anomaly matching constraint. And so we have checked that this idea works nicely for both vector-like and matrix-like quantum field theory. And uh, so, so, so up to this point, we have checked very explicitly, but I want to give an open issue whether we can distinguish gapless nature or ground state degeneracy in two dimensional limits. So thanks very much for your attention. Thank you, Yuya. Very nice talk. So the floor is open for questions. If you want to ask a question, just raise your hand, please. Okay, then I'll ask a question. Uh, Yuya, can you go back to the slide about the flag manifold? Okay. Models, please. Yep. So what is known here about the large N limit analytically? Uh, basically, almost nothing because it is a matrix-like sigma model, so large yeah. N limit uh, cannot be studied analytically, so it uh, remains as a difficult problem, I believe. Are there any results and conjectures even? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm not completely sure, but uh, yeah, as far as I know, there's an no result for large energy. And do these arguments here suggest something, maybe? Mm -hmm. Do your results suggest something for the large energy? Uh, yeah, right. So because, so there are n minus one sheet angles, so phase diagram becomes complicated, but it is just a high dimensional generalization. So phase diagram is expected to be just high dimensional generalization of this kind of phase diagram. So there are many polygons and yeah. uh, as a end point of that, pol so as a boundary of polygons, sometimes there are energy generation because of the anomaly matching or this energy generation may be replaced by some conformal field theory. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, that uh, you have a question just un unmute yourself please mute okay yeah. um yeah, yeah. yeah okay i think uh, the the difficulties are really the difficulties you are saying are really the difficulties associated with the matrix models in large and limit and the fact that they have order n square degrees of freedom so and right. this right Exactly. Yeah. So and since, since the, so there are SU and FU, so so relevant degree free of freedom is n squared. And in the case of CPN or vector like model, it's just yeah. n. So there is a huge difference be, but between mm -hmm. n versus n squared. Yeah. Right. Uh, maybe you know, uh, maybe not the flag manifold per se, but some Grassmannian like. Uh, n comma two maybe handled it first uh, instead of Grassmannian n comma n n over two. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I have a question, Yuya. Okay. Do you see? Uh, uh, thank you very much. First of all, for a, for a for a very beautiful talk. Um, do you see a, a methodology to attack some of the dynamical problems in the? uncompactified theory directly on R to the D or very, very large manifold T to the D where all the all the circle sizes are large. Uh, I see that's a nice and a difficult question. <laughs> so yeah what what I know so far is so this 
Yeah, right. So this kind of anomaly technique is just a kinematical constraint. So, so any system having the same symmetry with this anomaly should have the same constraint. And uh, <laughs> there are many possibilities to match this anomaly. In the case of two-dimensional model, since symmetry breaking of continuous symmetry is prohibited by Coleman, Marmin, Wagner, so we have less possibility compared with the higher mm -hmm. dimensional case. But uh, yeah, still there are symmetry, two possibility of the symmetry breaking or gapless nature. And uh, so I think your question is related to my open issue for the gapless versus ground state generation. Right. Right. And right. Yeah. So, so in certain, yeah, so except there is some nice exact solvable approximation. So I, I have no idea to give a good, yeah, solid statement for the choice of these two possibilities. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, of course, it's a big request, right? So. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, but uh, for this, for example, in the case of flag manifold sigma model, people are believing that so this let G3 symmetric point is believed to be gapless. Uh, for example, these people are doing lattice simulation with imaginary theta angle and analytically continue that result to the real theta angle. And it, it is suggesting that this point, so mass gap of this point disappears. So, so, and also there is a nice deformation of the SUN, uh, of the SUN level one with Minowitz model to this flag manifold sigma model. And that- and By that the double, double trace deformation? Double trace deformation. And uh, that double trace deformation for the SUN level one with you know, with the model is known to be irrelevant perturbation. So at least for small that perturbation, mass gap disappears even if you do that perturbation. So by those uh, circumference evidence, circumstantial evidence, this point is believed to be gapless for this specific model. But I'm not sure how to get that result from that semi-classical analysis, so I think it's an op interesting open issue. Uh, I see. It is irrelevant at the CFT point, but if you change, you know, if you change the kinetic term of the WZW, mm -hmm. then you can make the double trace operator relevant, right? Uh, um, exactly. Yeah, so for example, as, for example, if you consider SUN level two with Minowit, then I, I think that kind of perturbation is a relevant perturbation. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for questions. Any questions? Can I make a comment? This is yes. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, one comment and one question. So, uh, can I look at the figure of the chiral condensate in the Schrodinger model? Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, let me give a uh, one comment. So this blue one is the exact result, which gives a uh, uh, L two minus uh, one minus one by n, mm. and uh, this. Uh, one minus one by n is a uh, scale dimension of the SU three level one with the mean of it and CFT, right? Yeah. Right. And uh, it appears only the case with uh, ZN twist. If you consider the ZN non non ZN twist ZN twist case, so mm -hmm. the chiral condensate just gives uh, always zero. Right. Exactly. So, yes. And uh, in, on R2, so this clearly becomes a uh, less you know, with um, CFT. Mm -hmm. So the ZN twisted case only, how to say, reproduces CFT behavior. On the other hand, the non ZN twisted model cannot. So it, it, it indicates that ZN twisted beautifully 
uh, keeps the vacuum structure of the R2, uh, even in the case of the CFT, not only gap to case. It's my answer. Yeah, yeah right? thanks very much for the comment. Yeah, ex exactly. So at least if you do exact computation, only t after taking the n-twisted boundary condition, you can pick up the scaling dimension of the pr primary operator of the West minimum Wittem model. So yeah, so I forgot to mention that, uh, yeah, so, so, so symmetry twisting with exact computation nicely captures the scary, fractional scaling dimension of the CFT. Yeah. And uh, one question is uh, that regarding the quantum distillation uh, about the uh, CTN or the uh, yep. QCD. Okay, so I want to ask the, uh, so at least in CPN and the QCD with this ZN twist, so this kind of the quantum distillation happens in my understanding, right? Right, yes. And, right. Uh, so, but uh, in the case of ZNQCD, so there is some choice to whether you introduce the heavy adjoint quark or not. Mm -hmm. And if you introduce the heavy adjoint quark, in my understanding, ZN symmetry uh, is uh, get, get stable, and there is a kind of the uh, adiabatic continuity. And right. I want to ask the whether there is some difference between the cases uh, with adjoint, heavy adjoint quark or no adjoint quark in terms of the, this quantum distillation. I see. Yeah, there is an important difference between QCD and QCD plus adjoint quark. Yeah, so yeah. in the case of QCD, there are two important contributions to the partition function. One of the mesonic state coming out of quark mm -hmm. field. And that part has the same cancellation but due to that symmetry twisted boundary condition. But there are another important class given by Gru, uh, Grubel, yeah. Grubel state. And because of, and Grubel state does not contain any quark, in mm -hmm. the, at least in the quark model picture. So those state does not have these phase factor because even after symmetry twisting, Mm -hmm. And that part also in the large N limit is believed to show ledger trajectory. And because mm -hmm. of that, Hagedron transition should occur because of those gluonic states, even after mm -hmm. symmetry twisting. And the introduction of the adjoint quark basically tells you that so by gluonic factor at the high, in high energy limit, you introduce some N equal one supersymmetry. So if you introduce minus one to the F twisting, then because of that extra supersymmetry for gluonic sector, you can evade the phase transition. Yeah, so mm -hmm. in the case of QCD, because of the dominant excitation, it's not only meson, but, only, but also with glue balls. So cancellation of the glue ball sector requires extra introduction of the adjoint fermion, yeah. I see, I understand, thank you. the questions. Gerald, can I ask one more thing? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, can you go to chiral condensate picture, Yuya? Chiral condensate. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, I just want to make uh, one more comment uh, since we are in the resurgence conference concerning mm -hmm. some resurgent uh, related things. So this chiral condensate uh, on the small circle uh, on arbitrary circle uh, is dominated by just one fractional instanton. And at some point we thought that maybe the chiral condensate uh, can be a trans series, mm -hmm. uh, but it turns out to be a trans series with just one non, one, uh, non perturbative factor. So at some point maybe we may have thought that it may have been a trans series with more than one exponen exponential, but mm -hmm. uh, that thing is actually not quite correct because of probably of the fermion zero mode structure. So 
in this sense, this turns out to be a, a transfer, the whole chiral condensate turns out to be, in this case, a trans series with just one exponential and perturbative fluctuations around it. Actually, I suspect that if we improve perturbative fluctuations, we can make the blue line and orange line agree completely, my suspicion. I see, that's an interesting possibility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think anyone has computed the part of the expansion explicitly, so I think that's an interesting possibility to overcome the yeah. <laughs> this difference between these yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think the fact that, uh, uh, okay, yeah, that's all. Thanks again. Yeah, you started with this thermodynamic argument uh, uh, in the yeah. beginning. So now that you know all about these anomalies and, and uh, symmetry breakings, yes, is yes. it possible to refine this argument now for not just some generic system, but for systems with particular uh, types of symmetries? Maybe. Yeah. I'm <laughs> not sure. Have, have but you thought about yeah. that? Yeah, at, at least it's so. Yeah, it's consistent with the fact that symmetry twisting evades this large entropy thing. So, yeah. So in that sense, it yeah. So I see some consistency, but uh, yeah, refinement may be an interesting uh, yeah direction to consider. Yeah, so yeah, at, at this point, I do not know the answer. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of this work in superfluidity where they define a um, hmm. superfluid states in terms of twisted boundary conditions. I'm just wondering if there's some general thermodynamic argument you could construct here. I see. At least within a given class of theories. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think this explanation give a heuristic interpretation of this empirical fact, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether this argument itself is a rigorous argument because, and uh, yeah, I don't think, uh, yeah, some dynamics really uh, rule out any possibility of the symmetry breaking at high temperature. So. Yeah, so making this state, so so checking whether this statement is rigorous or not itself is an um, interesting study. And uh, yeah, at least for now, I do not know any counter example in the ultimate high, high temperature limit, at mm -hmm. least in integer space time dimension. Yeah, so there is mm -hmm. a recent one interesting work by Israel people like smoking and uh, also some Simon Center people, Zoha, uh, are doing that in fractional space-time dimension, there is an interesting counter example to this argument without any symmetry twisted boundary condition. Mm. So maybe combining those two perspectives, those stu two studies, maybe we can find further development of this direction. But yeah, so, so far I do not have a concrete idea about its possibility, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments for you? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much for your attention and I'm very happy to <laughs> give a coming okay. back talk here. Okay. Okay, last chance for questions, comments. If not, I'd like to thank all the speakers in this uh, virtual conference and all the participants. And also I'd like to thank all the people at KUTP who made this possible, the scientific staff and also the technical staff. Thank you very much for your help. And uh, we look forward to actually being able to go to KUTP again. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Thank you.